Michael Greenstone is an American economist and the Milton Friedman Professor in Economics, the College, and the Harris School at the University of Chicago. Moreover, he currently February 2018 serves as Director of the Energy Policy Institute at the University of Chicago EPIC, Director of the Becker Friedman Institute, and acts as Co-Chair of the Energy and Environment Sector at MIT's Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab J -PAL. Under the first Obama administration, he served on the Council of Economic Advisers as Chief Economist. His research interests focus on the nexus between development economics and environmental economics. Biography <inaudible> 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 A native of the United States, Michael Greenstone earned a B.A. in economics from Swarthmore College in 1991 and a Ph.D. in economics from Princeton University in 1998. Thereafter, he worked as a Robert Wood Johnson Scholar at the University of California, Berkeley UCB, 1998 before becoming an Assistant Professor of Economics at the University of Chicago 2003 in 2006, Greenstone moved to MIT, first as associate professor, 2003-06, and then as the 3M professor of environmental economics, 2006-14. During his tenure at MIT, Greenstone also held visiting appointments at UCB, the University of California Energy Institute, and Stanford University. Most recently, in 2014, he followed a call back to the University of Chicago, where he was made the Milton Friedman Professor in Economics and the College. At the University of Chicago, he further holds positions as director of the Becker Friedman Institute for Economics (BFI), director of the Energy Policy Institute at Chicago (EPIC), and faculty director of the Environment and Energy Lab at the university's Urban Labs. Additionally, Greenstone currently serves among else as co-chair of J. Powell's Environment and Energy Sector with Mushfik Mobarak, director of the Energy Research Program at the International Growth Center IGC, faculty director of the E2E Project, a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and a non-resident senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. In the past, he has been e.g. a chief economist on the Council of Economic Advisers under the first Obama administration, a member of the advisory board to the Secretary of Energy under the Trump administration 2015 a co-director of IGC's Climate Change, Environment and Natural Resources Research Program 2010 and a director of the Hamilton Project. 2010 to 13 Finally, in terms of professional service, Michael Greenstone sits on the board of editors of the Review of Environmental Economics and Policy and has been an editor of the Journal of Political Economy 2015 to 17, Review of Economics and Statistics 2007 to 10, and held positions on the boards of editors of the American Economic Journal, Economic Policy and the Journal of Economic Literature. Michael Greenstone is married to Catherine Osmond, a secularist writer. Topic: Research. Michael Greenstone's research interests include environmental economics, energy economics, public finance, development economics, labor economics, and health economics. In particular, he is a pioneer of the study of environmental issues in developing countries, an emerging field dubbed envirodevonomics. According to Ideas Repic, he currently February 2018 belongs to the top 1% of highest ranked economists in terms of research publications.
Topic: <laughs> Economic effects of air pollution. How does air pollution affect economic outcomes? To investigate this question, Michael Greenstone and Kenneth Y. Shea use geographic variation in the reduction of air pollution due to the 1981–82 recession to estimate the impact of air pollution on infant mortality in the U.S. They find that reducing TSPs by 1% results in a 0.35% decline in the county-level mortality rate of infants, with most of the reduction concerned concerning newborn deaths, in particular among Afro-Americans. In another study with Shea, Greenstone exploits the impact of the U.S. 1970 and 1977 amendments to the Clean Air Act, which set a federal ceiling for total suspended particulates (TSPs), empowered the newly created Environmental Protection Agency to designate non-attainment counties in excess of that ceiling, and to impose strict air quality regulations on polluters in such counties, on housing prices, to study the relationship between housing prices and air quality. They find that the legislation was effective in reducing TSP air pollution and, based on an elasticity of housing values with regard to TSP concentration ranging from minus 0.20 to minus 0.35, that the improvements in air quality between 1970 and 1980 attributable to the regulations imposed under the non-attainment designation caused an increase of housing values in non-attainment counties worth $45 billion. However, Greenstone also finds that the Clean Air Act's non-attainment designation probably played only a minor role in the 80% reduction of sulfur dioxide (SO2) concentrations in the United States, possibly because regulators assigned the SO2 non-attainment designation to many counties that hadn't even exceeded SO2 ceilings for a single day and consequently didn't impose excessively strict regulatory oversight. Finally, Greenstone also analyzed the impact of the 1970 and 1977 Clean Air Act amendments on industrial activity in the U.S. and found that pollution intensive in «non-attainment» counties lost C.A. 590,000 jobs, $37 billion in capital stock, and $75 billion at 1987 US dollars of output over 1972–87 as a consequence of the greater regulatory oversight exercised by EPA. <laughs> Economic effects of climate change Together with Olivier Deschines, Michael Greenstone initially found that climate change will increase agricultural profits in the U.S. over 2010 to 2100 by an average of $1.3 billion per year in 2002 U.S. dollars, and that the measurement of climate change effects on land prices, the hedonic approach, is extremely sensitive to seemingly minor choices about control variables, sample and waiting. However, following Fisher et al.'s 2012 critique with regard to data coding errors and conceptual oversights in Deschines and Greenstone 2007, Deschines and Greenstone subsequently re-estimated climate change to decrease U.S. agricultural profits by $4.5 billion per year over 2010–2100. In another collaboration, Greenstone and Deschines study the relationship between climate change and mortality and its mitigation through adaptation, and estimate that under «business as usual» Scenarios climate change will increase the age adjusted mortality rate in the US by 3% by the end of the 21st century though this effect may be strongly mitigated through populations adapting to the expected increase in the frequency of extreme temperature days
Topic: <laughs> Environmental and Energy Economics. Together with Hunt Alcott, Greenstone reconsiders the evidence in favor of an energy efficiency gap, i.e. whether consumers and firms fail to invest as much into energy efficiency as the expected increases in terms of utility or profits due to such investments would warrant. Overall, they cannot substantiate claims of a widespread energy efficiency gap, though their differentiation of specific investment inefficiency types leads them to conclude that policies aimed at addressing a supposed energy efficiency gap must be targeted to those consumer subject to investment inefficiencies if they are to be at all effective. How much do people value the removal of hazardous waste? Investigating this question, Greenstone and Justin Gallagher use a regression discontinuity design to compare the reaction of housing market prices at hazardous waste sites that narrowly qualified to benefit from Superfund cleanups relative to those who narrowly missed qualifying. They find the reaction to be economically small and statistically insignificant, suggesting that the average local benefits of Superfund cleanups are likely to be much lower than the cleanup's average cost of $43 million. In environmental economics as well as in other areas, Greenstone has strongly advocated for the greater application of quasi experimental methods to identify which policies are effective and efficient in terms of increasing social welfare. Miscellany How does the opening of a new manufacturing plant affect the productivity of incumbent manufacturing plants? Studying this question with Richard Hornbeck and Enrico Moretti, Greenstone finds that the TFP of incumbent plants in counties that were selected as the site for the opening of a new plant increased 12% more than in their runner-up competitors, with the agglomeration spillovers being particularly large if the old and new plants are similar. However, they also find that the wage growth in winning Counties caused by the increased local labor demand tends to exceed productivity growth, thus reducing plant profits, exploiting the 1987 federal permission to U.S. states to only raise the speed limit on their rural interstates from 55 miles per hour ca. 90 km per hour, to 65 miles per hour ca. 105 km per hour. Greenstone and Orly Ashenfelter compare the time saved due to the increase in speed limit with the increase in fatality rates an increase of ca. 35% to estimate the value of a statistical life. They find that approximately 125,000 hours were saved per lost life, suggesting if hours saved are valued at the average hourly wage an upper bound of $1.54 million in 1997 U.S. dollars as a value of a statistical life. Finally, Greenstone, Paul Oyer and Annette Vissing Jorgensen use the extension of mandatory disclosure requirements under the 1964 Securities Act's amendments from listed stock to over-the-counter stock trades on stock returns. They find that the announcement of compliance with disclosure requirements by those OTC firms most likely to be affected by the change in regulation was accompanied by abnormal excess stock returns of CA. 3.5% in the weeks surrounding the announcement and that expectations regarding the extension of regulations resulted in abnormal excess returns ranging from 11.5 to 22.1% in the period between legislative proposal and enforcement, suggesting large-scale insider trading at OTC firms. <laughs> 